Okay, welcome. Hi, uh, my name is Jill, and thanks for dropping in for practice. Um, the title might have caught you. Uh, I'm calling this uh, talk tonight, uh, Barbie and the Five Recollections. <laughs> it's, it's unavoidable. So at this time, there's a new release, much, much, much hype uh, movie about Barbie, the doll, and the, well, it's more than a doll, the uh, enterprise, the, yeah, the industry, and uh, a wonderful director and writer, Greta Gerwig, uh, who's done many other great movies, um, has directed this one. So if you haven't seen it yet, oh, there may be some spoilers here. I was just re remembering that for folks that haven't seen it yet. I should have said that before on the, the Zoom call. So if you're here on the Zoom, you haven't seen it yet, and you, uh, I'm not going to really go into that movie very much, just making uh, some references that are already in the previews. So if you've seen any of the previews, you're okay. Um, but if you'd rather log off of the Zoom and watch the recording, I, totally cool. All right, that's my spoiler alert. Yeah, I was Googling like, is Greta Gerwig a Buddhist? <laughs> because it's got a lot of Buddhist undertones and Dharma and, you know, but mind you, I see everything that way, so. <laughs> It's hard to tell. Everything has that. Um, so if, if you're familiar at all with the Barbie industry, uh, it's been sold over all these years with like Barbie houses and Barbie camper vans and Barbie boats and Barbie, I don't know what, everything's. So this kind of becomes Barbie land. It's like you could create a whole land that has Barbie shops and Barbie everything uh, in it. And, you know, in, in, in Barbie land, everything's pink, first of all, but it's also um, pretty and clean and uh, beautiful and, protected and uh, nice things. It's all just nice things, except for when we played with them as little girls or little people. Um, pardon me for that gender reference. Um, you know, we brought in our own reality into the play. But in, in Barbie land, it's, a, it's this very idealized world, if we want to call it a world. And you could loosely draw some parallels to Siddhartha Gautama's, that's the Buddha's name before he became known as Buddha, meaning awakened one. Uh, it's said that his home life before leaving home and becoming a renunciate uh, was very protected and very pleasurable and um, uh, free from unpleasantness, etc. And it's said that when he was uh, realized that that wasn't the full picture of life, uh, he went in search of freedom of suffering and left the left the home that protected, dare I say Barbie land. <laughs> protected environment. So um, as you would see, if you even just saw the preview of uh, the Barbie movie, um, this kind of, no, not this kind, not, certainly not comparing Barbie to Buddha, but uh, this type of journey of quest, which we're all on, which we've all embarked on, some what is the meaning of life what is my purpose well, how, how does this make sense that i'm here and then i die what you know all these questions i do, i don't doubt that all of us have had and 
it, it starts because there's, uh, so it starts, which you've seen in the preview of this big dance party in Barbie land with all the different Barbies and Kens and such, um, where Barbie suddenly says, do you guys ever think about dying? And the record just comes screeching to a halt and everyone freezes and they're quite horrified and um, all the conversation stops and there's a lot of confusion and gasping. You know, and of course it's paralleled to the the little girl or person. Why do I keep doing that? Because I played with them as a child. Uh, that th they're also probably having some experience of death in their life at some point. You know, our a grandparent dies, a pet dies, a neighbor, a parent, or you know, a sibling. Some at some point, even in a young person's life we experience death. And then the questioning begins. Um, you know, what is what is that? And how, how can we possibly make any sense of it? Um, so there becomes this, one of the Barbie characters is sometimes referred to as irreversible thought, irrepressible thoughts of death Barbie. <laughs> irrepressible thoughts of death barbie that's great and i i i could call myself irrepressible thoughts of death jill i uh but not in any sort of morose way but really in a awakening way in a way that leads towards awakening uh pretty much daily uh an awareness oh a new day I just woke up. I'm here right now, this breath, this in-breath. And at the end of the day, um, that that day has ended. My life is shorter. What have I done with that day? And um, part of this, and also like, yeah, when I'm driving, oh, might not make it home. Or it might be something, you know, we don't all get to have like our ideal most people don't get to have their ideal death lying at home peacefully surrounded by loved ones and free of pain etc although that's fine to aspire to it's um statistically not as likely so this kind of um recollection reflection awareness truth wakes us up to preciousness, uh, impermanence, um, the desire to live a compassionate and wisdom-informed life. There's many other parallels actually in the movie, and it's not actually that great a movie, but it's still worth seeing, I would say. Um, but it, stuff around aging, sickness, and death, which are, as I mentioned, Siddhartha Gautama, when he went into the village, reportedly saw these, which are called heavenly messengers or divine messengers, beings that lead to awakening, uh, a, an aged person, a sick person, and someone who had died. And um, then the fourth messenger of oh, that led to his quest to um, seek out freedom from suffering uh, was someone who had left the home life and had become an ascetic and looked, um, I guess they must have looked pretty peaceful. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, there's some other way to be here. Um, so there's something that I'll link below in the YouTube recording here called the Five Recollections. Some translations have called them the Five Reflections. And they're meant to be used daily and to be memorized and to um, be a daily reflection in this way. Um, 
and we could some they could also be seen in their opposite way like in their barbie land version as the five forgettables like i don't want to think about that <laughs> and um so we could look at them either way are we living with these as five forgettables things i work really hard to not think about or as reflections and recollections and um if you're interested in the suttas it comes from the anguta nikaya 5.57 i'll put the link for that down below in the youtube recording as well um and the, the, the translation of the title is called Subjects for Contemplation. So I'll just, uh, will I say, okay, I'm just going to say what the five recollections are first, and then say a little bit more about them. First one is, I am of the nature to grow old. There is no way to escape growing old. Secondly, I am of the nature to have ill health. There is no way to escape ill health. Thirdly, I am of the nature to die. There is no way to escape death. Someone's just turned on the printer here. I hope you can't hear that. Maybe you can. Um, there it is. I am of the nature to experience printing noises during a talk. There is no way to escape. <laughs> oh, sorry. The fourth reflection or recollection is all that is dear to me and everyone that I love are of the nature to change. All that is dear to me and everyone that I love is of the nature to change. There is no way to escape being separated from them. And the last one, my actions are my only true belongings. I cannot escape the consequences of my actions. My actions are the ground on which I stand. Some translations say that, can you please not come in right now? No, thank you. Sorry, folks. Um, so instead of the word actions, you could use the word deeds, my deeds, meaning my, my speech, my actions, my thoughts even fall into this category. Um, all right, so um, in this sutta, there's a little bit more, uh, obviously, teaching about each of these that is very helpful to understand the importance of them. So the first one, I am of the nature to grow old. And you may be thinking, yeah, obviously, <laughs> I know that. But do we really, how much do we fight it? <laughs> how much do we, yeah, there's some people that really, you know, don't even like to say how old they are and stuff. Yeah, okay. So when, um, so the teaching says, there are beings that are intoxicated with a youth's intoxication. That's such a great word, intoxicated. We're so intoxicated with youth. I, I mean, I don't even need to go into all the ways that shows up. Check it out for yourself. <laughs> okay. And then because of the intoxication with you, they or we behave in a bad way with our body, with our speech, and with our minds. Because we just don't see any, we're just consumed with youth. Like, oh, I'll be young forever. I can do whatever I want. I can you know, that kind of thing. And, but when we reflect that our intoxication with youth will be either entirely abandoned or grow weaker, um, then uh, then we become 
unintoxicated with it. So then it, it, the same goes on when there's an intoxication with health. So of course, this is not saying like, we're not gonna take care of our body and nourish ourselves. These are prerequisites for um, being on the path is to have um, medicine and a safe home and uh, sleep, I think is also one of the prerequisites. Sleep, medication, food is one. Um, so it, it's not saying, but it's the intoxication part. If we're intoxicated with health, then we can begin to behave in a bad way um, and not being aware that we will, that our health will either be entirely abandoned or will grow weaker. Um, then we act unskillfully. The same thing with the intoxication with life. Um, and, and then the fourth one, that is all, all that is dear to me and all everyone I love is of the nature to change. And I will be separated from all of these things and all of these beings. <clears throat> uh, the teaching goes on to say, now based on what line of reasoning should one reflect about this? that I will grow different and separate from all that is dear and appealing to me. There are some beings who feel desire and passion for the things that they find dear and appealing. And because of that passion, we conduct ourselves in a bad way in body in speech and in mind. But when we skillfully reflect on the fact that desire and passion for things and beings that we find dear and appealing will either be entirely abandoned or grow weaker, then this lessens our attachment to these unskillful ways. Um, so then the same happens for the fifth reflection. If we're not, if we're not aware of this, then we behave Poorly, if we're not aware that our actions, our speech, our thoughts, that we're not that if we're not aware that we are the heir to to that karma, comma, to th that every action, speech, and thought has an effect, has a ripple, has it, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. We're all completely interconnected, and there is. Uh, an effect. And if we're um, unaware of that impact, then we'll behave badly in thought and speech and, and action. Goes without saying, if we think there's no, no ripple, no effect, do whatever we want. And when one really um, is aware and cultivates these five recollections, then we will be less likely to be unskillful and harmful. Then it goes on to say that when one really considers, I'm not the only one subject to aging um, and et cetera, um, sickness and death. Um, I'm not the only one that's going to lose all that I love and hold dear to me. And I'm not the only one that experiences karma, comma. Uh, then I'm trying to abbreviate the sutta because it's a bit wordy. Um, okay, when we reflect on the path and the factors of this path of awakening that Siddhartha Gautama, becoming the Buddha, the awakened one taught, when we really understand these five reflections, recollections, then we stick with the path, develop the path, and cultivate the path. 
And when we cultivate the Eightfold Noble Path, right speech, right action, wise livelihood, wise mindfulness, et cetera, the, the whole Eightfold Path, then we're on the path to destroying what are called the fetters or um, our obsessions of greed, hatred, and delusion. <clears throat> so these five recollections are directly related to the middle path, the way to the ending of suffering. Because of these five recollections, we feel inspired and motivated uh, to really cultivate and stick to and develop the path, the Eightfold Path. <clears throat> There's uh, many other suttas and teachings on what's called marana sati, mindfulness of impermanence, mindfulness of death. And um, yeah, irrepressible thoughts of death, Barbie. And, and of course, the opposite of that, it would be called mm, one of the terms is thanophobia the real a real strong fear of death and this can show up in very uh profound ways with the uh, you know can can be a crippling anxiety fear of death but for most people it's, it's statistically not uh very prevalent to that in that degree but I would say most people have some degree of fear of death, if not a lot. Um, and if we don't reflect on and practice with it now, while we have clarity and wisdom and health, um, to whatever degree we have that right now, how can wisdom and and mindfulness and compassion show up at the time of death if we don't practice it how will we practice with it now we'll certainly can't can't not inform that time of dying even if it's a sudden death or um a, a violent death etc it um As I was saying before, these are things I, I think about. Okay, well, what if it, like a, I get T-boned right now in a car? First, I'll swear probably. And then, um, you know, there may be just a, even a moment, if there's just a moment to just be think peace, just a moment to connect to the heart-mind awareness with love with compassion with presence i'm good with that <laughs> yeah so mm. yeah there's other commentaries that could make more uh mm, intersections with like the barbie land movie the barbie movie that i referenced at the beginning and uh i don't really need to go there <laughs> Uh, the lot of it is things we've covered in other talks here, but uh, I will say mm, we've covered this a, a few times in other other ways. Um, in Buddhist cosmology, there's an understanding of what's called heavenly realms, hell realms animal realms, human realms, and that it, a heavenly realm, which could be an analogy of a Barbie land, where everything is ideal and perfect and everybody's beautiful, except for they don't have flat feet, but um, the, uh, you know, all the, all the, those stereotypes that, uh, 
for us, we could even have that aspiration to be to live in some heavenly realm where everything is comfortable and peaceful and um yeah what else to say about that but it is considered much more auspicious um, rare precious and the place that will is more conducive to leading to awakening to be right here in this hot mess of a human realm with this aging this sickness this dying this loss of all that i love and hold dear to me and this karma the um effect and ripples of my thoughts and actions and speech this if we were in a heavenly realm or a barbie land realm uh everything's way too comfortable and good there's no incentive to practice the path uh so better to be here right here in the middle of this hmm much more we could say but or not better to practice yes yes let's practice okay so adjusting your posture your space for um, a posture of wakefulness it's a practice of awakening uh, so if you need to take a stretch or stand up or move around for a moment getting any supports you need for your posture uh, please take some time to do that so any sighing breaths that are helpful to you or movements looking around your space can be helpful or looking at uh, resting your eyes on something peaceful of course with this practice of letting go of attachments and awakening we want to let go of other distractions and uh, sensory delights that might be helpful And then resting your eyes either downward or on something peaceful or eyes closed. And just meeting ourselves where we are in this moment. bringing in our intention for practice perhaps your intention is one of awakening or cultivating peace wisdom what is inspiring you to practice this this evening or to this day whenever you're practicing Take some time here to just really feel into that intention. Where does that land for you in your body? How does it feel to 
set that aspiration And then we'll take a few minutes here just to meet the body and begin relaxing and grounding and settling. So just feeling into the face and the head, the skull. Is there any tension here that can soften or release? Across the forehead, in the eyes, in the jaw. And I'm feeling into the area of the neck and throat, across the top of the shoulders. Seeing if there's any letting go that is helpful here. And all the way down the arms into relaxed hands. We practice letting go of grasping and holding on by relaxing the hands. Feeling into the torso, heart center, belly center, the back. Inviting as much softness, comfort, ease as possible in this moment. I practice a lot with the soft belly meditation, noticing the deep inner layers of the belly and that are often activated, activating the nervous system and inviting some letting go to whatever degree is possible. When you're ready, feeling into the weightedness of the hips, groundedness of the legs and feet. And then just resting in a whole body awareness of being here now, here now.
And through these reflections, if at any time it feels like it's anxiety producing or overwhelming, certainly just open your eyes and come back to sensations of the ground. And then we'll just open to these five recollections as much as is available, allowing these to really be known. I am of the nature to grow old. There is no way to escape growing old. I am subject to aging, have not gone beyond aging. If there's any aversion or inner debating around that, really let that just be known as well. Abandoning intoxication with youth. And then letting that part of the reflection pass and reconnecting with the ground or with your breath, with sensation here and now. And then if you choose to, inviting in the second recollection, I am of the nature to have ill health. There is no way to escape ill health. I am subject to illness. I have not gone beyond illness. And just include noticing any inner dialogue that comes up for contractions in the body, sensations, aversions. Just a gentle awareness to notice. if there's any intoxication with health.
can either just rest in that inquiry, that re reflection, or you can repeat it as a phrase. I am of the nature, or I am subject to illness, have not gone beyond illness. And then releasing that and reconnecting with ground or breath, some body sensation in the present moment. If your mind is still feeling caught in any stories around illness or sickness, you might want to open your eyes or take a deeper breath and reconnect with just being here now. Couple more breaths here. And then if you choose to join in to the third re re recollection, I am of the nature to die. There is no way to escape death. Or I am subject to death, have not gone beyond death. Just be gentle with what comes up for you with that. Notice any reactions or thoughts. Any fear? If it feels overwhelming, open your eyes, return to feeling the body here and now in its aliveness. And then releasing that, reconnect with the sensations of the ground or with the breath. The fourth 
recollection, all that is dear to me and everyone I love are of the nature to change. There is no way to escape being separated from them. I will grow different, separate from all that is dear and appealing to me. When we are consumed with desire and passion for all the things that we find dear and appealing, we conduct ourselves unskillfully in body and speech and mind. With wisdom, we see there's only freedom when we're not clinging. Reconnect with sensations of ground or breath, body, here and now. Open your eyes or move if you need to. Before we move to the fifth. And the last recollection, my actions or my deeds are my only true belongings. I cannot escape the consequences of my actions. My actions are the ground on which I stand. My actions are my only true belongings. I cannot escape the consequences of my actions. My actions are the ground on which I stand. And as one wisely cultivates and considers 
and that I am not the only one subject to aging, to sickness, to death. I am not the only one that will lose all that is dear to me. Everything is of the nature to change. And I'm not the only one that is the heir to the effects of my actions. All beings are subject to these. Then we cultivate and develop and continue on this path of the Eightfold Noble Path. of right view, wise or right thought, wise kind speech, wise and kind actions, wise livelihood, Wise effort, wise mindfulness and concentration. Feel these intentions settle into your body. Feel them fuel your wise intentions to continue to develop the path. These are protections for ourselves and for each other and for all beings. What does that feel like in your body right now? you for your practice and intentions. It helps my heart deeply to share practice and feel our shared intentions. Um, I'll put the link to uh, that sutta down below and uh, a version of the five recollections. Um, Yeah, I think that's all. Thank you for joining us.